Hey, good evening. I can't hear you. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah, 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 clearly. So we'll start? Yeah, sure. Okay. So good evening, everybody. Welcome to this evening episode of Pursue. And today we have Pursue 6N which is liver and GI pathology and we are streaming live from Tata Medical Center, Kolkata. <coughs> and today's topic is mesenchymal tumors of GIT and to talk on that we have Dr. Paramita Roy who is an MD, IP, GMAR from Kolkata. She is a former fellow, University Health Network from Toronto, Canada. A senior consultant in the Department of Pathology, Tata Medical Center, Kolkata with multiple publications in the national and international journals. And it needs to be mentioned that she is the person who actually set up the lab of Tata Medical Center. So she is an expert, a very senior consultant, and she will be talking on this topic. But before I ask her to take over, let me request all of you to keep your mic muted, your camera off, and please don't share your screen. With this, let me request Dr. Paramita Rai, ma'am, please share your screen and let us start. Yeah, I can see your screen here. Yeah. Yeah. Visible, right? Yeah. Just press okay. the button that is removed. Yeah. Let's pop up. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Right, fine. Yeah, so should I start? Yes, please. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for that kind introduction again. Um, so today I'll be talking about mesenchymal tumors of the GI tract and um, so this is our Bible for um, um, reporting these tumors and it has a pretty comprehensive list of all possible mesenchymal tumors of the GI tract. But soft tissue tumors are a difficult um, group really because they are not very common. So we get a little flustered when we get a biopsy. And it's important to keep our um, eyes and mind open that these tumors may not be only from within this list. Practically any kind of mesenchymal tumor can occur in the digestive system. So what the WHO has done is classified the most commonly happening tumors into based on the etiology or the site of the tissue of origin into GIST, which is the commonest, the predominant group for both benign and malignant mesenchymal tumors of the digestive system. Then there are the adipocytic and myofibroblastic tumors, the smooth muscle and skeletal muscle group, 
then the vascular and perivascular tumors neural tumors and tumors of uncertain differentiation like picoma angiomyelipoma uh, calcifying nested stromal epithelial tumors synovial sarcoma clear cell sarcoma embryonal sarcoma and the list goes on actually it's um, we do really see tumors beyond the ones enlisted here so um one thing to remember is that uh, when we have a large tumor in the abdomen sometimes it's not clear to the radiologist what the site is and that um, can really complicate things because retroperitoneal tumors tumors arising from other abdominal organs would also come in your list of differentials when we are dealing with a biopsy and uh, we may not know that the primary site is a um, gi tract Uh, when we are uh, trying to diagnose these lesions so um, however this is an excellent uh, review a paper on the um, site based um, classification of uh, spindle cell tumors it actually enlists uh, the most common site of occurrence of the different mesenchymal tumors and uh, it's an excellent um, uh, reference for if we want to narrow down our list of differentials it's um, good to know what the common site of occurrence is but uh, it's uh, of course not a full proof system as you can have rare presentations of rare tumors in any site group so it helps us but we can't be blinded to other options when we are trying to diagnose these lesions so what is our approach to gi mesenchymal lesions once you know that you have a spindle cell lesion uh, spindle cell tumor in your biopsy um our job is to classify as do are we dealing of course getting the diagnosis and getting the diagnosis depends on are we looking at a benign tumor or a malignant tumor because for spindle cell lesions that's not a clear cut differentiation some sarcomas can look very bland and some benign tumors can have very pleomorphic and um, a very dirty look on the biopsy which would seem aggressive so um, knowing the morphology of the differentials is very important uh, if we have to diagnose so just looking at the slide it may not be obvious to us whether we are looking at sarcomas or uh, benign tumors um, so uh, benign tumors are more common but both Uh, benign and sarcoma mesenchymal tumors are very rare and most of them are just so our first uh, approach is to rule out a just if we have a spindle cell lesion on our biopsy and then we have to be aware of all the morphological mimics and here immunohistochemistry plays a huge role and i will show you with some examples that doing choosing one or two ihcs can lead us into trouble so it's wise to use a broader ihc panel of course um, not an extensive ihc which is not cost efficient but um, we, i'll show you what our common ihc panel is and how we approach our cases um, and lastly knowledge of molecular um, classification the soft tissue tumors like hematological malignancies has really advanced in the field of molecular biology and if we are not aware of the common mutations and if we don't substantiate our diagnosis with a mutation for certain entities then both diagnosis and treatment of these tumors get limited so um it's good to have a pattern based approach so for um, tumors with a spindle cell morphology the first is the commonest tumor that is just is what we will rule out uh, some other common spindle cell lesions which occur in this site group are imft or inflammatory myofibroblastic tumor there's moid type fibromatosis can um, is not very un- uncommon um we also see um, benign lesions quite commonly uh, which are incidentally picked up on endoscopy um or sometimes the patient present uh, clinically these are inflammatory fibroid polyps leiomyoma schwannomas then we have the lipomatous group biopsies where the tumor is looking obviously uh, fatty so there we have the lipoma and its malignant counterparts liposarcoma 
which we have to uh, differentiate and also uh, angiomyelipoma which is a part of the picoma group can uh, look very fatty and uh, on biopsy uh then we have the tumors which have an epithelial cell morphology the commonest one in this group would be epithelial cyst and epithelial uh, leiomyoma also tumors uh, like picoma granular cell tumor cell sarcoma these are not very rare and um, they show uh, an epithelial morphology on biopsy uh vascular tumors like hemangioma hemangioblastoma and sarcoma and glomus tumors are also not very rare um they can show an obvious um, uh, morphology of uh, vascular pattern or sometimes uh, they can be quite solid so they have a varied uh, morphology this spectrum of tumors so um for our spindle cell lesions the if we are if we don't have a very good idea on morphology and if we have to shortlist our differentials then first we would use a panel of five markers that includes a uh, ckit or cd117 which is a gist marker cd34 it also highlights gist but it also covers another uh, other spectrum of tumors like inflammatory fibroid polyp uh, vascular tumors um I, to name a few desmin would cover myoid tumors so both smooth muscle and skeletal muscle tumors can be excluded with desmin positivity um talismol is another uh, smooth muscle marker it's very uh, quite very sensitive and quite specific for smooth muscle but we have to remember that quite commonly they stain positively in gist so that's a um, caveat for using talismol s100 picks up the neural tumors like um, uh, schwannoma and uh, um, perineuroma uh, and also the genets the gastric neuroectodermal tumor um, ck should be included in all uh, panels for spindle cell lesions to rule out sarcomatoid carcinoma and um, there are a few of uh, the rare tumors which can focally express ck i will show you when i discuss them in detail in a second panel we usually add if the tumor is ckit negative we are add a dog one if none of these markers are positive we um, put a sma to at least understand that are we dealing with a myofibroblastic differentiation or is there any myo differentiation in the spindle cells that we are seeing and h calcium as i said is a small muscle marker so uh, even if the desmin is negative uh, we can have some cases which are h calcium one positive and that's been negative which helps to diagnose leiomyoma so um, of course there are variations to the panel depending on the morphology and the site and the age group uh, depending on whether the, the it's a pediatric patient or an adult patient our differentials are different so there is variation to this panel but usually if it's a standard spindle cell uh, tumor of the gi tract this is what our approach would be so with that background let me show you a few cases this was a 35 year old uh, female who presented with dysphagia and on endoscopic ultrasound uh, we can appreciate here a smooth uh, mucosa covered nodule and the patient underwent a punch biopsy this is the endoscopic ultrasound we can see below the uh, mucosa here a tumor um and um, sorry the patient underwent an fna and uh, the the smears show a bland uh, tumor cells here quite a bit of cytoplasm and uh, kind of spindle shaped elongated tumor cells and this is the cell block that we had made we can appreciate the bland spindle cells here and abundant eosinophilic cytoplasm no appreciable mitosis no atp uh, so we did a um, ic panel on uh, this cell block and came to the diagnosis of leiomyoma if we did not have uh, the advantage of doing ic on the cell block we might have been limited to call it spindle cell neoplasm so um, leiomyomas are very common mesenchymal tumors um, this was an intervagal uh, uh, resection 
so of the esophagus and it can also be seen in other gi site groups like um, colon rectum um usually these are incidental they don't really um, pre- present with symptoms they're small um, but uh, in the esophagus they can be symptomatic one thing to keep in mind is when we are uh, dealing with these biopsies and fnas um we have to be very uh, well uh, aware of the clinical presentation because sometimes a wrongly misdirected uh, fna biopsy can pick up normal uh, smooth muscle cells from the gastric or, or the esophageal wall and we may uh, mislabel these as uh, leiomyoma and miss the actual diagnosis that the, or another tumor that the patient may have underneath the muscle coat so that is something we have to keep in mind not to jump to uh, the diagnosis unless we are very sure that it is neoplastic so typical uh, leiomyoma has uh, eosinophilic fibrillar uh, clumped cytoplasm cigar cigar shaped blunted nuclei which mimic uh, gastrointestinal stromal tumors and uh, mitotic figures are rare the ihc panel that uh, we do on the cell block is um we do a 3 ihc panel that is we use a myot marker caldesmon and we use a gist marker cd117 and we put in a, a neural marker which is s100 so that's for our cell blocks and fns um leiomyomas are positive for caldesmon desmin sma and calponin and then negative for the gist markers uh, cd117 dog1 cd34 and also s100 Lyoma sarcomas are the malignant counterpart of smooth muscle tumors they are extremely rare um, uh, and uh, the how we differentiate them from lyomas is of course by the bizarreness the severe nuclear atypia mitotic figures necrosis and um, one thing to remember is uh, sometimes when there are large abdominal tumors uh, we can have retroperitoneal uh, lyoma sarcomas of female genital tract origin which might mimic uh uh intestinal origin so that is a more common presentation of lyoma sarcomas than primary ones of the gi tract another tumor of my differentiation which can mimic uh lyoma atas tumors are the ebbb associated smooth muscle tumors these are very rare i've never seen a case but it um it is important to keep this differential in mind uh this is seen in immunocompromised patients and the uh, myoid staining is usually patchy this patchy desmin positivity the morphology of these tumors can vary from spindle cells to small round blue cells is generally an inflammatory component and the diagnostic marker is doing an eber in situ hybridization test which is positive um I just briefly touch upon the importance of US guided FNA in diagnosing mesenchymal tumors of the GI tract. This is a very important uh, um, recent I mean um, ancillary test that we have with us. So uh, when um, because uh, we can approach these lesions through the endoscope and an FNA is taken if we do a cell block that is our best chance of getting a confirmatory diagnosis by using ihc and um, uh, treatment of gi mesenchymal tumors are dependent on diagnosis on the us fna or a uh, core biopsy so um and this is the importance of adequacy testing for these fna and making cell block uh some differentials of the lymphomatous uh, tumor are uh, this uh, tumor for example which is not uncommon at all we uh, have seen many cases um, so as you can see here then a bland spindle cell tumor but there is palisading of these spindle cells and they seem to be forming these verruque bodies alternating hypo and hypercellular areas that is not very apparent in this biopsy so this is a schwannoma and uh, the typical verruque body appearance uh, does help us to morphologically diagnose these cases on a biopsy and in a resection specimen what we uh, classically see is this lymphoid cuffing um, around the tumor so that's 
a hallmark of schwannoma which has to differentiate from the other blind benign um, um, other um, spindle cell neoplasms and these tumors are s100 positive a uh, rare variant of uh, schwannoma uh, which has been de- uh, recently described for the gi tract is the reticular and microcystic variant of schwannoma now we um, came across uh, one case like this in a pharyngeal biopsy and there the morphology was almost identical to an adenoid cystic carcinoma which uh, this can mimic so um, a differential of a benign versus malignant tumor had arisen in that case luckily we had the um, uh, benefit of ihc so this tumor was nicely uh, s100 positive and it was negative for gata 3 which is a um, and p63 um, so we could uh, diagnose schwannoma of a reticular variant for this tumor for this case now coming to the second case um this was a 72 year old male patient who presented with dysphagia and endoscopic ultrasound showed a g junction submucosal bulge the mucosa was unremarkable and the ct scan showed a 4.5 cm lesion at the outer aspect of the g junction um, as we can see here a heterogeneous echo pattern and the the patient underwent a us guided fna and these are the smears uh, both the diffic and the pap stain smear show uh, bland spindle cell uh, neoplasm it's a cellular smear and uh, not much pleomorphism even at high power and um, no appreciable mitosis or necrosis the cells are almost have a cigar shaped nuclei you can see here and this was the cell block which showed these classical perinuclear vacuoles and the cigar shaped nuclei as you can see here also in the cell block the pleomorphism is minimal and no appreciable mitosis at this level on immunohistochemistry there was strong diffuse positivity for dog1 cd117 and h caldas1 as i mentioned before it can this one can be um, commonly positive in gist so um, gist is a very common uh, tumor of the it is the most common uh, mesenchymal tumor of the gi tract and uh, based on the site um, it is commonest commonly seen in the stomach followed by the small intestine and rarely presents in the other parts of the gi tract um s extra gastrointestinal gi tract um gist is also seen uh, incidence is as low as 1% but um you know in practice we see quite a few of these cases um most commonly gist presents at 6th uh, decade there's a slight male predominance preponderance and um, most gists are sporadic tumors but 5 to 10% of them can be syndromic and these patients usually present with multi site tumors uh, the syndromic ones have germline mutations either in the kit or the pdgfra uh, gene they can also be associated with neurofibromatosis carney stratakis syndrome which is gist with paraganglioma or carney's triad where the patient has pulmonary chondroma gist and paraganglioma so morphologically most of the gists are spindle cell neoplasms but uh, some can also present with an epithelioid morphology or we can have a mixed pattern of epithelioid and spindle cell tumor the important thing to remember is that pleomorphism is very rarely seen in gist so if we are seeing a really pleomorphic aggressive looking lot of atypical mitosis then it's very unlikely that you're dealing with a gist so that's one good uh, clue to diagnosing these tumors there can be morphological variations like sclerosing type palisaded vacuolated subtype diffuse hypercellular pattern or very hypocellular tumors where we see a lot of collagen globules or skinoid fibers and we even have ones where very cavel body like areas are seen which can mimic schwannoma So the IHC profile of gist 
is CD117, which can be positive in uh, nearly 80 to 90 percent of the.
interesting tumor that we occasionally come across. This was a 70-year-old male patient with a large pancreatic duodenal periampillary region tumor. Uh, the tumor comprised, as, as you can see here, nests of blue cells um, uh, around round epi to epithelial looking cells with a moderate amount of eosinophilic to clear cytoplasm. Um, and uh, we can make out scattered mitosis here. Yeah. Um, there's a monomorphic um, uh, look to this tumor. The cells are, have prominent uh, nuclei, uh, vesicular nuclei, but um, seems to be monomorphic, like neuroendocrine tumors and like uh, PNETs. There's a monomorphism to the morphology of this tumor. So this uh, is a gastrointestinal clear cell sarcoma or also uh, known as malignant gastrointestinal neuroectodermal tumor, or GNET. Um, so these tumors uh, mimic clear cell sarcomas of the soft tissue, uh, which, um, but they do not express the melanocytic markers. So they are they look like clear cell sarcomas, but they're negative for H HMB45 and melanin A on IHC. So um, interestingly, they are commonly positive for the um, neuroendocrine markers, synaptovicin and CD56. So, if we are not careful and if we don't use a, um, a wide panel of uh, markers, we may misdiagnose these as neuroendocrine tumors. Uh, the uh, IHC to pick them up is S100 and SOX10, which are strong diffuse positive in these tumors. And uh, they are defined by EWS break apart, um, uh, EWS mutation. And using fish for EWS break apart probe, we can pick these tumors, um, diagnose these tumors. Now, uh, this is a um, pretty common mesenchymal tumor of the pediatric age group. This is the third commonest tumor in children in the liver after hepatoblastoma and infantile hemangioma. So, mesenchymal hamartomas uh, not only present in the liver, they can sometimes be. Um, be um, seen in the soft tissue around the liver and diagnosing on a small biopsy is sometimes challenging because um, the morphology is a bit varied and a bit um, what we can see uh, sometimes is just a biopsy showing a lot of loose islands of connective tissue. So in that setting with the radiological suspicion of a mesenchymal hamartoma, it's very difficult to stamp these tumors. Uh, rarely we get a rejection uh, for these lesions and their um, diagnosis depends on seeing uh, by physic nature. So there's a connective tissue component and then there's an epithelial ductal biductular component along with ductal plate malformation. And they present in very young children commonly. And um, um, also, it's a hematomatous lesion, so we see dilated haposet blood vessels, fluid filled spaces. Uh, they somewhat rem resemble uh, fibroadenoma of the breast in sections. There's a wide uh, range of vascular tumors which can occur in the mesenchymal tract. Um, they are very similar to uh, the corresponding entities in the soft tissue, so I won't be covering the vascular tumors uh, in today's talk. Um, well, especially the benign group hemangiomas are quite common. Hemangioendothelioma most commonly presents in the liver but can be rarely seen in GI tract uh, biopsies as well. Um, Kaposi sarcoma, uh, angiosarcoma, these are occasionally um, um, seen and uh, I will uh, show you an example how um, they can come in the differential of other spindle cell sarcomas. Um, now, um, before that, case five. This was a six-year-old boy who presented to us with a with abdominal pain and a large tumor in the liver. He was initially uh, diagnosed as high that it's cystone radiology and was being treated for that. AFP was also normal, but then he underwent a core biopsy and it showed this bizarre morphology of uh, spindle and stellate cells arranged haphazardly in a mixoid background and some bizarre cells, prominent mitotic figures and giant cells as seen here. Um, 
so um, we did uh, IHC on uh, the biopsy and the case was positive for glipican 3 and by excluding other differentials we could uh, diagnose embryonal sarcoma of the liver these are um, rare but um, embryonal sarcoma is the commonest uh, pediatric malignant mesen chimal tumor of the liver actually so if we don't see uh, hepatoblastoma components we don't see other excluding other differentials this uh, can be diagnosed there is no good uh, marker to pick this up um, um, glipican 3 is um, we were lucky it was positive but only few cases show this stain uh, sometimes uh, CK and Desmond can be focally positive and they're negative for the liver markers HEPAR1 uh, this is an aggressive tumor but if diagnosed early and rejected they can have a good outcome um, our case was treated with chemotherapy and then followed by partial hepatectomy and now he is still doing well two years after treatment. And this is the last case. Uh, this is a 55 year old male who presented with dysphagia for two months. Endoscopic ultrasound showed a polypoidal growth uh, occupying the entire lumen. And um, the biopsy was uh, a spindle cell neoplasm. We, it was uh, showing ATP, so we said query sarcoma. All the keratin markers were negative and the patient was planned for upfront esophagectomy. So um, generally, if it is an epithelial tumor like a squamous cell carcinoma or, the, or adenocarcinoma of uh, the esophagus, the protocol in our hospital is that the patient undergoes neoadjuvant treatment. So it's either neoadjuvant chemoradiotherapy, which is cross protocol for um, um, squamous carcinoma or just neoadjuvant chemotherapy for adenocarcinoma. And um, then the patient undergoes resection. But because our diagnosis was sarcoma, the patient underwent an upfront surgery. And as you can see here, a large polypoidal tumor filling up the entire lumen of the esophagus. And this is the cut section. Um, on microscopy, it's a very cellular spinal cell tumor with um, a range in short fascicles and pleomorphic prominent mitotic figures seen here and uh, on IHC the tumor was positive for SMA and um, CD31 which is a vascular marker also showed a significant amount of positivity. The negative stains were Desmin and Caldesmond, the Myat markers, um, all the keratins and CK, CK818, EMA were negative, just markers uh, CD117.134 and S100 were all negative. Um, so uh, our differentials were, um, um, we couldn't stand as a particular type of sarcoma and we were um, wondering about angiosarcoma as well because of the CD31 positivity. And we also kept a poorly differentiated sarcomatoid carcinoma in our differential. And in one of the sections out of uh, extensive sampling that we did from this tumor, we did find focal positivity of uh, P63 in the spindle cell areas. And this is the CK. So, and this epithelial component in this section also shows dysplasia, which is highlighted by the P63 IC. So, this was uh, the origin of the squamous cell. Uh, sarcomatoid carcinoma. So sarcomas are very rare in the GI tract and we have to keep in mind that we need to exclude a sarcomatoid carcinoma uh, before we stamp something as an undifferentiated sarcoma or undifferentiated, uh, yeah, as an undifferentiated sarcoma. And the um, um, squamous differentiation for uh, can be very focal or can not be there also in uh, certain biopsies. So that's all for, uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Roy, wonderful presentation, really wonderful cases. You've covered the entire gamut of mesenchymal tumors of the GIT in a very nice way with cases. Membranal sarcoma of the liver are very rare. 
Maybe Many rare, yeah. Difficult diagnosis. Yeah. Yes. Very, very interesting cases. And very gratifying that the patient is still yeah. I mean, doing okay. We are hoping the child makes yeah. it. Even the last case which you showed, sarcomatoid carcinoma, I mean, with that extensive, you know, workup, I don't think so all of us would be able to do all that. And then come yeah, up with a we don't stroke. really need to do the workup, but we shouldn't exclude it from our radar of differentials. Uh, is all I wanted to point out for the PGTs because mm-hmm. think of common things first. So, sarcomatoid yeah, carcinoma has to be excluded before we call, unless it's like looking like a typical gist or a lioma sarcoma or something that we know is matching the morphology and the IP exactly. That's fine, but. Calling something undifferentiated sarcoma or spinal cell sarcoma without ruling out sarcomatoid carcinoma should not be done, and we commonly encounter this situation uh, in the GI Great. It is a very good uh, talk for the PGTs. You know, everything has been covered, and whatever relevant and important is there has been looked into. I mean, in a very nice way. Very nice. Thank you so much. Wonderful Thank presentation, you so Dr. Roy. Excellent. You. You've done a wonderful job. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you very Take much. Take care. Please share okay. your PDF so that we can share with the students, right? I will send it to you. Thank okay. you so much. God bless you. Take care. Thank Bye-bye. you very Bye-bye. much for this. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.